Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this mini lecture of Cosmonio for the Data Science Center in Health. My name is Brit Wanaka, I'm project manager at Cosmonio, and I'm very pleased to talk about artificial intelligence meets the clinic. Well, this topic is rather broad, but I want to narrow it down by using the context of our own AI-based product called Noose. Noose is ancient Greek for mind, and that is immediately covering the broad applicability of this product. Noose consists of pattern recognition software, and the user is able to easily annotate image data on the tablet screen, as you can appreciate on the right hand of this slide. This short video shows image annotation in a nutshell. The stylus is used to delineate certain regions of interest, and a neural network is subsequently trained with this input. Even with a small amount of data, the network is able to predict the region of interest on new data after a few epochs. In addition, an active learning feature is integrated in Loos, which makes it possible to train faster and more efficiently on a smaller amount of data. For last, NUS enables non-expert users to customize the applicability of the network, depending on the image data that is used. The software can be optimized on the fly, which makes it intuitive and adaptive. On this slide, the image annotation workflow in NUS is visualized. This project consisted of the detection of wrapped and unwrapped hay bales on image data. In addition, the network was trained to count the classified objects, as you can see on the software prediction on the right. This project could, for example, aid farmers with the possibility to use drones for automated hay bill count. There's another example. Um, it's a task chain that consists of animal detection and classification on wildlife cameras. On the left-hand side, input data is annotated and used to train a neural network with. And the results are software predictions based on these data. These examples illustrate how input data determines the output in news, and depending on the data that is used, a variety of applications can be realized with one AI-based tool due to the adaptive nature of news. If we then look at the added value of pattern recognition software in a healthcare context, then things will get really interesting, because image processing and assessment in the medical context is very time-consuming these days. On the right side, you can appreciate a project in which Noose was involved that covered uh, organ segmentation, for example. Another project in which Noose was involved is summarized on this slide, and the purpose of this project was to facilitate an early detection of pneumothorax in trauma patients. Well, on the top, you can see how a medicine student uh, annotates different regions of interest on the X-ray data that are visualized on the tablet, such as the lung in pink and the location of the pneumothorax in yellow. Well, the images below show the workflow in NUS, in which the annotated image in the middle can be compared with the prediction of NUS. For this project, patient X-ray data and CT images were used to delineate these regions of interest. And by complementing X-ray data with CT images, the researchers aim to achieve a higher accuracy within a shorter time frame. Well, this is vital for radiologists who are working on the time pressure in clinical practice especially when it comes to trauma patients who need surgery as soon as possible. Such a detection tool that is tailor-made for this purpose can be of great help. I did not give a warning beforehand, but I hope you are not e eating a sandwich right now. Uh, but for last, this video illustrates an application in which the network has been trained to recognize different phases of a gallbladder removal surgery. This phase recognition depends on the surgery tools that are visualized on the input data, and you can see those indicated in the video by those green boxes. This information could then be used by a different software tool that could process this data in order to predict the remaining surgery time based on the surgery phase that has been indicated by NUS. The previous examples illustrate the added value of AI-based tools in clinical practice, especially with regard to the enormous amount of patient data that is annually generated in healthcare. While well, the annual amount of global generated healthcare data has been indicated to be 153 exabytes in 2013, in 2020 this amount of worldwide generated healthcare data is expected to be 2,314 exabytes. Well, these numbers look rather surreal, even more if we consider that one exabyte is one byte with 18 zeros behind it. Anyway, these numbers do reflect the need of tools that are able to accurately process these data in order to aid, for example, radiologists during the daily job. However, 
adaptive pattern recognition tools that can be continuously optimized and that are able to be disease and data specific, such as news, face a difficult road towards the clinic on large scale. And this is underlined by the fact that all current commercially produced diagnostic algorithms are locked. That means that they are produced, trained and optimized for a specific purpose prior to deployment in a clinical setting. The image on the right summarizes a list of diagnostic networks that are produced on large scale and approved by the American Food and Drug Administration. But they are only applicable to very specific healthcare niches. Well, if we then hop from this American example to European legislation, the regulatory hurdles for adaptive algorithms are quite similar. It takes me too long to discuss both of the American and the European legislation, but the European Medical Device Regulation, the MDR, is a new set of regulations that governs the production and distribution of medical devices in Europe, and compliance with the regulation is mandatory for medical device companies that want to sell their products in the European marketplace including software as a medical device. Well, the MDR contains a risk classification framework that determines which conformity assessment procedures are applicable. And the higher the risk class indi indication, the more regulatory hurdles there are to take for the company. Well, for example, a class 2A devices already require an assessment uh, procedure performed by a third party, a notified body, which goes hand in hand with strict regulations. Well, to prevent you all from reading the MDR, it's quite extensive. Uh, I took one example from the medical device regulations to illustrate the legislative hurdles that are present for adaptive artificial intelligence like news. Article 120, Rule 3, tells us that a device that is compliant with the applied regulations can only be placed on the market uh, if there are no significant changes in the design and the intended purpose. If we then look at the definition of design and intended purpose as provided by the MDR, this means that no software alterations nor performance changes can be made after MDR compliance. In addition, no changes in the target groups and clinical use can be established. This can happen, for example, if an active learning tool is first only integrated in the field of radiology uh, for segmentation purposes, but over time it appears that the device can also be of use for well, name it for pathologists to diagnose patients by recognizing abnormalities on whole slice images. This means that the approved intended use, namely using the software as a segmentation device within radiology, will be elaborated with a different diagnostic purpose. Such an extension has great legislative complications, since a new application for CE approval can be the case if the intended use is altered, but also if a new patient or a different user population is used as a target group or if the clinical use changes. This consequently prevents AI-based tools like NOOS from being applied in clinical practice on a larger scale. Every network with an adaptive nature that can be optimized on the fly and can be tailor-made for a range of diseases that involve pattern recognition will stumble upon these regulations. We can therefore conclude that current policy does not facilitate the large-scale deployment of innovative adaptive AI in healthcare yet, although the precise compliance roadmap highly depends on the appointed notified body. Well, in order to empower clinicians with AI-based tools within the regulatory boundaries that ensure patient safety, more stakeholders should join the conversation. Uh, the clinical relevance and the needs from a patient and the expert perspective have to be matched with the technical feasibility within a regulatory framework that protects patients, aids medical experts, and that facilitates innovative solutions. Well, this was a short mini lecture about AI in the clinic, and please feel free to contact us for any questions, suggestions, or bright ideas. I want to kindly thank DASH, the Data Science Center in Health, for this nice opportunity to share our work with a broader audience.